this um, little beauty is my little perch fry. Um, and it's done awful, awful well for me on places like Rutland. Uh, Rutland and Pittsford for the perch, really. Um, <clears throat> and it's just a, it looks a complicated fly to tie. However, it's very, very simple. But it's one of these, I've got a bit of foam in the head there. And if I just turn that, I'll show you. It sits over the back of the body. And it's great for fishing up near the surface. I'd fish it on its own. Very similar I would with other fly patterns. Just in case, because it's got a tendency to grab big fish. Um, brownies and rainbows. But just another little addition to your your fry pattern armory, if you like. Um, and one that's really not that difficult to tie, so... Let's go ahead and tie them, shall we? Because I've got a lot of frits on the hook there, I'm using a, a short shank special. And the reason for that is it's got a nice wide gap. Nice wide gap. Get that nice and straight in the vise there. The one thing I never got, bear me a second, is my tail, which is a bit silly. So, tie-in fly. I use a, let's make sure that's straight in the vise here. I use a AO thread in white. And I'm just going to come in behind the eye, winding down, covering the body, giving myself a base to work on. Bring my thread back up. I want to leave enough space up here, so bring my thread back up. And I've got some white marabou. Generous little pinch. Just spin it in your fingers. And then stroke some of that back. I want to give myself, like I say, I want to give myself enough space to work with at the head. So, come down the body a little bit, like so, and then tie in your... Now, you can tie this international rule size, however, I prefer it with a, a longer tail, not too long. People, people make the mistake of putting uh, really long tails on flies and you get a lot of like nips rather than takes. Um, so I tend to go with a shorter tail. So I'm looking at an inch off the fly. So a good, the space of your thumb, basically. On your thumb, pinch. There you go, so that's your tail. The same, obviously some people's thumbs are bigger. But you can see that it's probably about the same a little bit longer than a hook shank because we're working with frits. So I've got here, you can use whatever white frits you want. This is a really old one uh, and it's quite short in the, the fibre. It's no long frits and it works really well in this because it's got a, a, a thick white core so it covers everything up. And all I'm doing is taking a few strands off the core Stroke everything back, wet your fingers if you have to, and make sure that fritz is up well stroked back because we've got an additional, additional step, uh, step to get in here. So I need a lot of space. So that's that But I've then got this really fat 15 mil olive fritz. Really, really fat stuff this. There's a lot of fibers on there. And I'm just gonna take some away from the core to expose the core. So there's my core there, tie that in. And I want to make sure that the end of the core, the exposed bit's right on the frets. And there's a reason for that, I'll show you in a second. So we're going to come up covering the body, nice and even. And then stick a little quick finish in there. So to do this, I take my white fiber and I want to wind up in nice touch and turns pull the fibers back every time you take it around the hook shank like so so you see my fingers go straight on to keep everything in place 
nearly there. One more turn, I think. Maybe. Yeah, that's probably right there. So just come in and lock off with your thread. If I'm doing anything with uh, threads, I always use a blade. This is ridiculously sharp. Ridiculously sharp. I'm going to stroke these fibres back and secure them. Wet my fingers, pull everything back, give myself a little taper to work with there. Okay, so there's your body. <coughs> this is your key bit here. We've got a tail, we've got a body. Now we need a back, so we've got to, we've got to twist this. Twist, twist, twist. The reason we've got to twist this is because I want as much frets over the back as possible. So just with your thumb and forefinger, just keep twisting, keep twisting, keep twisting. And you're just bulking the frets up. Okay, really, really twist that and then bring it forward. Keep it twisted, bring it forward. And then I'm going to grab my thumb and forefinger. So we've got the back there, didn't let it go. I'll just let it go there. Keep it twisted. And then with my thumb and forefinger, I'm going to pull some of these fibers away. So I'm not looking on a load of bulky frets. And I just pinch and loop and lock it in place. So I just pinched and looped that and I locked it in place. Again, with this frets, just like with the last, I'm going to come in with my blade. Stupid sharp blade. And then we'll just tidy up and keep that taper. So there's your, your top and bottom. Just like the little perch. Any stray fibres, just wet your thread and lock everything out of the way. Keeping my taper there. Next, because we're doing a little perch, I've got a glow bright number five, which is that lovely orangey colour, um, very similar to the perch fry. And all I've done is took a single strand off and doubled it twice. So I've got four strands either side. And we're just going to take a little bit. I'll catch it on my side of the hook shank. And then hold it over. Keeping everything in place and also keeping that taper. The taper's key to this. So to cut it, just bring your fibers up. You don't need to have them too long. So just just a little bit above. I wonder if that's you can see the light there. Just a little bit longer. And where the eye of the hook is, and they'll sit back over the, over the, your body. I'll show you what I mean, like so. Now you can, you can see there, that's perfect. You can give these a little bit of a, a rub and a play with your Velcro. Just to marry all the fibres up, like so. So now the important bit. So this is a, 7mm <clears throat> booby eyes in white and all I've done is I've come in and I've cut one at an angle 45 degree angle I'll just quickly show you so if you come in and you just cut that in the middle like so at that angle and all I do is we just shape the head and we just go around in a circle just to shape the head so it's nice and smooth What's that bit? so I've got one here that I've prepared and if I just that's the shape that we're looking for it's going to sit on there and you'll see the thickness of the, the bottom is going to sit on that taper there so I've got a dubbing needle and I'm just going to go through from the middle can you see that through the foam, take your time with this. So you see there, I went right through the needle. And then just a couple of rubs. 
so it's ready, primed and ready. And I'm going to whip finish here. Again, keeping my taper like so. Now to keep this in place, <clears throat> I'm going to slide this bit of foam onto there from here. That's how we're going to do it. But to make sure it sticks, we've got to put a little bit of super glue. Just a little bit of glue, keeps everything in place. You didn't be too generous about it, you just want enough for it to stick. So now we've got to stick this on, on this hook. Get everything in place here. Put it on the, the eye of the hook, <laughs> a bit fiddly. So it's on the eye of the hook there. And then we're just going to do a little scamp. Right, let's forego that. We put the glue in, we just get the hole in over the eye, work it back. Tie that in a little bit tighter. So I'm going to make the hole a little bit bigger. You can use a, a tapered needle, but to be fair, if you just roll it a couple of times in there, make the hole a little bit bigger. And then just slide it. Not super glue's catching onto the hook like so. You see it. So now that this is on, come back in with your thread. Sorry, for some reason that's my camera stopped here. Um it's back in with your thread, just hold the foam back and then just lock that in place. Like so. Okay, that's that locked in. Trim with your scissors, trim the waist thread. And then we'll just whip finish to keep everything nice and secure. Pull the foam back, whip finish. And that's gave you the space to get your tippet through. Get your tippet through there perfectly. Because the foam's coming up, it looks like it's covered the eye, but I promise you if I just turn it, you'll see that it has it. You can get your, get your um, Tip it through there nice and easy. So that's your foam helmet in place. I could have maybe shaped it a little bit better. I should have rounded off the edges a bit better, but you get the idea, you can round those off. To be fair, I can probably do it with a lighter right now. So the next stage we've got is <clears throat> just colouring the back. So I've got this um, permanent mark marker to Sharpie. And this is like a, a weird green, a bottle green. And all I'm going to do is start for the back and then just come down. Don't go too far down either side until you're in line with that fritz. Just so you're in line with that fritz there. I'll probably cut that. A little bit short as well. Just getting the you can see there. So now to get a, the little stripes, I've got here a brown sharpie and thin at the back, getting wider and getting wider at the front. I'll do the same on your side. I just turn that thin at the back. Just do little lines here and then fatter at the front, like so. That's your little stripes, nice and easy. And then what you can do, you can have this floss a little bit longer if you want. I have got it a little bit longer than I'll probably cut that a little bit too short. But um you didn't want to overkill the thing. So next is little silver eyes. Uh, I'll do my side first, then your side. Little sticky silver eyes. 
do this out for so you can see it. And we just, we, we want to get these on the white rather than the colour, like so, so you can see them. And then, same on my side. They're fiddly because they're very, very small. But they're worth it. They're really worth it. Eyes are a real trigger on fry patterns. A real trigger. Again, just come in. So I've got an eye on both sides there. And then to finish the fly, I just come in with some resin. And the first bit I go over, obviously, is because you want to get them in place, is we go over the eye on either side. So we just go over the eye on either side and on my torch, just secure that in place. And then we'll just take another coat over the colour on the foam. Just caught in the fly. It just makes for a more durable pattern. And then when we get a UV torch. And then just, just gives you a nice hard head. And you see what your little bits of orange in there for the, the fins. Just a lovely fly and one that works really well. Fish on a floating line or, or a slow sink tip. Um, and like I say, you can you can shape, I never shaped the, the head that great on there, but just shape the head a little bit better, a little bit rounder on that one. And you also see that the gills, just a tiny bit longer. I wouldn't go too mad in the gills because you don't want overkill, but um, that's my little foam fry pattern um, based on an original fly called the Helmet Blob. So we'll call that the Helmet Perch Fry. I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. Take care folks. Bye bye.